Hey, it's Dr. Lloyd here from Adjust Clinic, and today I want to talk to you about headaches after a whiplash injury. If you've ever had a whiplash injury hit from behind, then you might have also had headaches. And headaches from neck injuries is really common. Injuring the muscles, some of the pain-sensitive structures in there can cause a radiating headache pain. So it starts back here, but you feel it in the front. There's a couple of mechanisms for that. Um, Pain-sensitive structures in the neck will radiate the pain. There is some crosstalk between the nerves for the upper neck and what's called the trigeminal nerve in the brainstem, where those signals kind of get mixed up. But in the spirit of a book report, I want to tell you about this book I just picked up from Amazon, The Cervical Spine by James Taylor. I've never seen injuries so elucidated as well as what I see in this book. Now, this guy took some cross-sections of actual human spines, stained them for clarity, and took pictures of them to study them. And um, so let me show you what he found. So we know that there are a couple of ways that you can have headaches coming from your neck. Now, first of all, like I said before, the spinal inputs to the upper neck will come into the brainstem and sort of have crosstalk with the part of the brainstem that has ending, nerve endings for the face, V1, V2, V3. This is the trigeminal nerve, and that can cause face pain or headache. But also, the greater occipital nerve, it innervates this part of the skull right here. The greater occipital nerve comes from the upper neck. Now, when you look at some anatomy apps, you see kind of a loose network of nerves. So we have the skull, the neck, and some of the neck muscles back here. The greater occipital nerve comes out between C2 and C3, the second and third segments of the neck. It passes through muscle layers and goes up to the skull right there. Now, if you just looked at some anatomy app like this, you might not see very much room for a nerve being pinched or compressed. But what this book by James Taylor, not to be confused by the, with the folk singer, what it shows is that, okay, this is the condyle of C2. This is the joint between C2 and C3. This is the inferior oblique muscle, the same muscle that you see right here. The inferior oblique muscle comes right up against the vertebrae. And between that muscle and the vertebrae is the C2 dorsal root ganglion for sensory input. It's like a bundle of cells in there. And then you have these tracks of nerves going through the greater occipital nerve. And what you don't really appreciate from these anatomy apps is that how closely bundled these are together, right up against the bone and ligament and then nerve and then muscle, inferior oblique muscle. This is a muscle that gets tight when you have headaches or neck injuries, like a whiplash injury. Now this is a healthy muscle, a healthy nerve and a healthy bone. When you go here, this is the result of a whiplash injury. This is the same joint, C2, with the atlas, C1, sitting on top of it. And this is after an injury, but the person died of other causes too. And what it shows here is this dorsal root ganglion of C2 has bleeding around it. And these uh, synovial folds, between the bones have become bruised. And you can see if this is bruised and inflamed, that can interfere with the nerve activity causing headaches. Also local pain in the upper neck. This is the inferior oblique muscle and th this is bruising of the muscle as it becomes pinched with that injury.
This is a little bit deeper into the cross section. So it's showing the spinal cord right here and how closely associated the spinal cord is with that muscle. And so compression of some of the soft tissue down here can cause headaches up here. I hope that clarifies things. I never saw such a clear representation of some of the injuries in the upper neck as I did with this book. So I, what's important about this is that if you've been in a car accident, it's important to accelerate the healing process as best you can. Maintain good movement within reason, avoid re-injury in the acute phase, but strengthen the muscles and support the discs, the facet joints, the ligaments in the neck in the subacute and the chronic phase or the later stages of healing. In the later stages of healing, you've got to keep good movement, you've got to keep the muscles strong, and you've got to remain active. Throughout all stages of healing, you must also pay attention to your nutrition, your outlook on the outcomes of the injury, maintain supportive relationships with your loved ones who can understand what you're going through. But, but keeping the spine moving well is one of the keys to help accelerate the healing process and give you the best outcomes possible.